If G is a connected graph with genus G, we found the minimum degree satisfied the inequality. Consequently, for most graphs, the minimum degree is less than or equal to 6. For the genus 0 graphs, this guarantees the existence of a vertex of degree 5 or less in a planar graph, and by induction we were able to prove that all planar graphs are 6 colorable. Can we extend this approach to graphs of greater genus? We hope so, since that's what the rest of the video is about. So first, let's consider genus 1 graphs. If g equals 1, then our minimum degree will satisfy. And so the minimum degree is less than or equal to 6. So we might need 7 colors. Now, clearly, if g has up to 7 vertices, then a 7 coloring exists, which, in our induction proof, establishes the base case. So suppose all genus 1 graphs with k or fewer vertices are 7 colorable. Let g be a genus 1 graph with k plus 1 vertices. It has to have a vertex of degree 6 or less. So if we've removed that vertex, we have k vertices, so a 7 coloring exists. And since v is only adjacent to 6 other vertices, Restoring it will require, at worst, the seventh color. This proves the induction step, and so all graphs of genus 1 are seven colorable. And with a little effort, we can actually produce a seven colorable genus 1 graph. What about genus 2 graphs? If g equals 2, we have... Now, this does depend on the number of vertices, but if we have enough vertices, say, more than 7, then this quantity is less than or equal to 7. And so our minimum degree is less than or equal to 7 for most genus 2 graphs. So any graph on a two-handled sphere has a vertex with degree at most 7, and all graphs with up to 8 vertices are 8 colorable, which establishes our base case. So if all graphs with n equals k vertices are 8 colorable, then a graph with k plus 1 vertices has a vertex with degree at most 7. The graph with that vertex removed has k vertices, so it has an 8 coloring. And restoring the vertex gives us a point with at most 7 neighbors, so we can use the 8th color for the point. And that completes our induction proof, and so we know the genus 2 graphs are 8 colorable. While we could repeat this for genus 3, 4, 5, and so on graphs, let's try to find a general result. Analyzing our proof, we note that we first found the minimum degree of the graph, we took c to be 1 more than the minimum degree. For graphs with c or fewer vertices, there's a c coloring, and that's our base case. Then we could use induction. So our statement is true for our base case. We'll assume the statement is true for all graphs with up to k vertices. A graph with k plus 1 vertices must have a vertex of degree c minus 1, so its neighbors only use c minus 1 colors. If we remove it, we get a C colorable graph, and when we restore it, we can use the Cth color. So what's C? Our goal is to find an upper bound on C, so we'll assume our minimum degree is as large as possible and see where that takes us. Since we'll eventually be making C equal to 1 more than the minimum degree, we'll start by assuming that C minus 1 is the minimum degree. So remember, the greatest that the minimum degree could be is 6 plus 12g minus 12 divided by v. But since we'll have a c coloring if we have c or fewer vertices, we only care about the case where v is greater than c. So for v greater than c, the greatest the minimum degree can be is... 
And so the greatest C minus 1 could be is, and this gives us an equation in C. Solving this equation gives us And while the quadratic equation generally gives us two solutions, we can disregard the negative solution in this case. Now, generally speaking, this will not be a whole number, so we need to round it. Since we took the greatest possible value for the minimum degree, this means the solution corresponds to the greatest possible real value for C, so the greatest possible whole number will be found by rounding down. This suggests that any connected graph with genus G has a C coloring, where C is given by... If we let G equal 0, we get... Which proves the four-color theorem. Or does it? So certainly if G equals 0, C is equal to 4. So we know that any graph with up to four vertices is four-colorable. So that gives us our base case. So now we'll suppose that every graph with up to n equals k vertices is 4 colorable. Let g have k plus 1 vertices. Now if g equals 0, the minimum degree of a vertex must be, so the minimum degree is less than or equal to 5. And so we can, uh-oh. The problem is that after we remove the vertex, even if the remaining graph has a 4 coloring, since the vertex has 5 neighbors, we might require 6 colors. And so the problem is our induction fails if the genus of the graph is 0. In fact, we might worry that our induction step fails for other values of g. And unfortunately, it doesn't. This is unfortunate, because if it did, then someone could solve it for fame and fortune, or at least a publication in a graph theory journal. Since our bound is valid for g greater than 0, we get what's known as Hewitt's theorem. Any genus g graph with g greater than or equal to 1 is c colorable, where c is this expression. While we could find Hewitt's theorem to find an upper bound for the number of colors we require, we can also use it in the other direction. So what is the minimum genus graph that could require a 10 coloring? So we can substitute into Hewitt's formula and find... Now, since the genus has to be a whole number, the genus is either 3 or 4. To decide, we can invoke a complicated inequality argument. But remember, concrete doesn't hurt. We could compute C if G equals 3, and we find... Then our graph has a 9 coloring, so G equals 4 is the least genus for which a 10 coloring might be required. 